Dragon Ball Super's Tournament of Power was by far one of the biggest anime events of 2018 that had tons of amazing moments, beautiful soundtracks, and above all, dope-ass fighting animations that shook the world. But when it comes to finding out which characters were the strongest, then it does get a little bit complicated, especially when characters get multiple power-ups and transformations along the way. Within this multiversal clash, there were 80 fighters, and to be honest, the vast majority of them were trash like Ribrian, got eliminated too quickly, or didn't show anything conclusive. So I won't be including every single character, but I'll make sure to include the important ones at least. So without further ado, let's check out the strongest characters within the final arc of Dragon Ball Super. Hey guys, please be sure to check out Exter, who make very efficient and premium leather metallic wallets that will make your life so much easier, thanks to their slim shape and security features. Do you ever get tired of trying to pull out a specific card out of the many that you might have? Well, the extra design makes that process as painless as possible, because with the click of a button, you can easily get a hold of them. The extra wallets also have RFID protection to keep data secure from would-be thieves, and it comes with a built-in tracker and app just in case you lose it. And you can simply call it by using Google Home, Alexa, and Siri services. So, be sure to check out their website with many colors and designs to choose from, and use the following affiliate link to save up to 20% off your purchase. Thanks, now let's get right back into the video. Um, yeah, Tien, he didn't really do shit. I mean, he got defeated by Roshi, like, even though he was stronger than him for most of the series. And really, the only thing he did was defeat some sniper who has really, like, not really impressive feats. I mean, all he did was blow away a heavily suppressed Piccolo's arm off and kill some jobber from Universe 6 who we don't know how strong he is. So there's not really much to go off of for Triclops here. Our first notable placement goes to the trio The Dangers, who theoretically have two different levels. Normally, they're within the Boo Saga tier since Basil, the Red Kicker, was able to go in against an enraged Boo but ultimately lost due to his steroid power-up given out. Lavender was able to put Gohan on the ropes using his poison hacks, and this is impressive given that this Gohan is supposed to be stronger than his ultimate level of power in the Buu Saga, as implied by Gohan telling Goku, hey, check out how much stronger I got. Bergamo, the blue one, is probably stronger than these two in base given that he is the leader and the eldest brother. But his true power, or potential, is showcased when he uses his hack's ability, which allowed him to get stronger off of Goku's own power, to the point that he somewhat pushed away Super Saiyan Blue Goku's Kamehameha, only to be overwhelmed by the Kaioken. Goku did imply that he was serious as to, you know, impress Zeno and the Grand Priest, but it's likely that he wasn't going, like, all out all out, because he seemed to have been taking the battle against Topa more seriously. With their teamwork, however, they were able to force Goku into kind of doubting that he could take on them in base, and Vegeta actively perceived them to be in danger, and stepped in to help out. Although I believe that they didn't have to go Super Saiyan Blue to defeat the trio, I do think they at least pushed them enough to make them transform to a state beyond their base, which is very obscure, but that is a conclusion I came to. Among the Universe 7 fighters, the most surprising and one of the most clutch came in the form of Master Roshi, Goku and Krillin's legendary master who surprised a lot of people in the Tournament of Power. For one, he managed to press Frost despite being heavily worn down, solidly beat Tien before the tournament, and managed to defeat Ganos, a duck boy who Roshi thought would have given Goku trouble due to his ability to basically get stronger over time. Since we know that Frost was at least superior to base Vegeta and Goku during the Universe 6 arc, I think Roshi pushing a stronger one is a better feat than whatever the trio the Dangers showcased on their own with their own capabilities and power, not like with the hacks, right? And I mean, despite many fighters having superior power or stamina than the old man, Roshi still managed to outsmart them and predict their movements. And he should solidly be at least above Tien given that he beat his ass, right? People usually meme a lot about Krillin, but he actually did some work in the Tournament of Power, as he was able to help eliminate two Universe 4 fighters, one of them being Majora, who was strong enough to put Android 18 on her ass and make her think that Krillin would have trouble with him. Of course, Krillin was able to knock out the Sly Fox by overwhelming his sense of smell, but the fact that he was able to tag team a character who managed to be a challenge for his much stronger wife is certainly a worthy accolade. 
And I mean, it was an opponent that Android 18 was like, wait, hold on, like, I don't think we can beat him that easily, right? Majora, the blind fox from Universe 4, would be right at home alongside Krillin, seeing as how they traded blows and they were pretty much equal. But one could argue that Majora was overall superior, at least a little bit, given that Krillin had to resort to dirty tactics in order to win. And one thing I'd like to mention going further into the list is that Krillin could be a lot higher if he did match like a serious 18, but it is possible that 18 was likely not fighting at her full capabilities in this battle, or she simply got stronger, as I'll get further into. So Krillin could theoretically be placed higher, uh, depending on how you go about it, and if he truly is comparable to Android 18. Universe 3 was by far one of the most interesting universes to compete in a tournament as they proved in making it to the semi-finals and had amassed tricky fighters that would maximize their survivability as much as possible. Or at least, that was the idea. Anyways, among these fighters were the three individual robots, Baller Raider, Koitsukai, and Pancha. Although we didn't see much of the other robots, one of them, Baller Raider, managed to make base Gohan cuck down, and the three of them together later proved to make him turn into his ultimate state. In this case, they are at least superior to most base Saiyans, and their trio's might is at least potent enough to challenge a Super Saiyan Blue tier being like Gohan, and, you know, basically force him to try against them. Look, the robots are actually dank as f okay? An Universe 4 fighter that managed to surprise me was Mona. A humanoid whose body would inflate like a balloon, and she basically managed to overwhelm Kaba even in his Super Saiyan 1 form. In fact, Mona was so strong that she was confident enough in taking on three base Saiyans, including Kalafla and Kale. However, Kaba ultimately earned a higher placing because he managed to defeat her by surpassing his limits and unlocking the lightning-empowered Super Saiyan 2 state. Kaba might not have been as strong as the other Universe 6 Saiyans, but he dared to challenge his master Vegeta and was confident that he could take on him in Super Saiyan 1. And I'll let you guys decide on this, but it seems that Kaba pushed Frieza to use like his Golden State to defeat him, but I think it is just as likely that Frieza was just doing it to get rid of him as soon as possible, because Frieza does actually have really good showings later on. Up next is the big hulking metal man from Universe 6, that being Megeta who pushed Vegeta in both occasions to transform into a Super Saiyan. And we both know that unlike Goku in most cases at least, Vegeta doesn't transform unless he really needs to. So this leads me to believe that Megeta was at least solidly above his base state and is enough of a challenge to force Vegeta to transform into a Super Saiyan. The thing is, Megeta wasn't even straight up defeated, like all that really happened was that Vegeta transformed into a Super Saiyan Blue, blasted off his earplugs, and insulted him, which, you know, led him to jump off. So if you want to interpret that, like, he quote-unquote pushed Vegeta to transform into a Super Saiyan Blue to, like, bypass his defenses, then you could argue that Megeta is at least above Super Saiyan 1 Vegeta, and by extension, Kaba. During Universe 10's last stand, Gowasu put his hopes into Obuni, a fighter with a strange ability that allowed him to separate his energy signature from his body's movements in order to confuse his opponents. This tactical foe was so strong that he forced Gohan to transform into his ultimate state and take hits from him, because Obuni didn't really have any openings. As we know, Gohan wasn't one to hold back during this tournament, so if he had to transform and was panting during the battle, this leads me to believe that Obuni was solidly above Super Saiyan 2 Gohan and rivaled his ultimate form. Gohan's mentor, Piccolo, proved to be a worthy asset in the tournament as he assisted in tag team with him in order to put an end to Universe 6's battle for survival. Personally, I'd say that Piccolo was quite comparable to the Universe 6 Namekian Sauna and Perina, but he was overpowered by Perina to the point that Gohan had to step in and go ultimate to help him out. In fact, the two Namekians were so powerful that Gohan said that they needed to use their full power in order to defeat their foes, and Piccolo had to charge a special beam cannon to cripple their defenses. Generally, I'd say that Piccolo was at least superior to Super Saiyan 2 Gohan going by their training regiment, but was not quite at the echelon that Ultimate Gohan was, which rivaled Goku's godly power prior to the tournament. But I do think he is at least within a decent threshold of Ultimate Gohan's power at least prior to him, you know, becoming stronger. Speaking of Namekians, the ones I'd slightly have above Piccolo would be Saonel, who endured a point-blank full power Kamehameha from Gohan, 
and Purina, who overwhelmed Piccolo at one point, and matched Gohan's Ki Blast as well. They did mention that Piccolo was an incredibly powerful Namekian and that they had to use their full power against them, so maybe they're around the same threshold of power as Piccolo. But I think that due to their higher life force, thanks to being fused with countless Namekians, they had the slight edge over Piccolo as they survived being pierced by one of his deadliest attacks, the Makanko Sapo. One of the newest additions to the Tournament of Power were the two Saiyan girls, one of them being Caulifla, who quickly evolved to the point that she defeated Napapa, an Universe 10 fighter who managed to handle Basil's attacks, and she also obtained Super Saiyan 2 in a short training session with Goku. She proved to be at least above Kaba due to her quick mastery of Super Saiyan 2, and due to the fact that she managed to knock away the three aforementioned robots in base, meaning that she is at least above both Gohan and Kaba's base states. Albeit a gag scene, she also implied that she could beat up the mighty Universe 6 Namekians after she obtained more power following her battle with Goku whilst she was combined as Kefla. She may not have been as strong as her protege Kale, but she was showcased as being relative somewhat as they were both clashing with Goku. Between the three Universe 6 Saiyans, the strongest one was certainly Kale, as she rocked the entire tournament stage, pushed Super Saiyan 2 Goku to power up multiple times, endure a suppressed Super Saiyan Blue Kamehameha at point-blank range, and as she got stronger and showcased her controlled Berserker form, it made Jiren twitch a few times while he was meditating. Although not quite on the level of Super Saiyan God Goku, post-UI1, she was certainly enough of a challenge that Goku had no other option but to go beyond his Super Saiyan 2 state, despite having gained a Zenkai from his previous encounter with Jiren. Another reason I'd have Kel up here is because her power was complemented and feared by multiple characters, to the point that even Jiren had to step in at one point. And, one of her biggest accolades was being able to defeat four Pride Troopers alongside Caulifla at max power that Topo thought could take care of Goku. Uh, how wrong he was, of course. Apart from the big three, Universe 11's Pride Troopers were pretty huge disappointments that were batted away like nothing. However, an underdog was certainly Kunshi, who was able to react to Hit's attacks and movements, help Dispo numerous times, and his landmine ability proved to be so dangerous that Hit even went as far as giving Goku a word of caution. Although Super Saiyan Blue Goku was able to no-sell his mine attack, he still forced him to go beyond his god state, and he was likely not holding back given that he was forced to go Super Saiyan Blue anyways, in order to keep up with Dispo. So, I'd say that Kunshi is at least Super Saiyan God tier, pre-UI1 of course, because, I mean, being able to keep up with Hit is really impressive. However, I do think that the Universe 6 Saiyans could theoretically be stronger, because they did fight a stronger Goku, uh, and only overwhelmed him once they fused. Android 17's twin, Lazuli, aka Android 18, is up next as she took on Kokoto, a pride trooper who alongside three others, managed to push Caulifla and Kale to use their full power against them in a beam clash. Plus, she managed to casually lift a heavy Tupper who was overwhelming base Goku and was actively breaking the Kachi Kachi metal, which is one of the densest materials in the known multiverse. Regarding her battle with Majora, it is likely that Android 18 was either suppressed or simply grew stronger as the tournament went on, and I think it is likely because in the battle with Ribrian, who was gravely amplified by her comrades, she was able to overpower her, like, completely, once she remembered, like, her family and her love for them. And to further prove that Android 18 is not to be underestimated, she was able to take hits from Aniraza, who crippled Super Saiyan God Goku, who was stronger than the one that was basically making a laughing stock out of Caulifla and Kale. Of course, Son Gohan, Goku's son, would be quite high in this list, as he was able to rival Super Saiyan Blue Goku prior to the Tournament of Power, and although his attacks failed to do anything to Topo, who should at least be Super Saiyan Blue Kaioken tier, he was still able to hang with beings that pushed Vegeta and Goku to turn into Super Saiyan Blues, such as Koichi Raider, the three-way fusion of Universe 3 and precursor of Aniraza. He also managed to defeat a Super Maximum Lightspeed Mode Dispo with Frieza's help, a battle in which it was stated that in a straight-up brawl, Gohan would have basically won. It is also worthy to mention that Gohan implied that if Frieza betrayed them, that he would knock him out of the ring himself. But given how Frieza outright has better feats later on, I don't find this to be likely, but I mean, it is up in the air. Unfortunately, because of Dispo outright overwhelming them due to his speed, this cripples Gohan's overall placement. But he is certainly not to be underestimated, as he has surpassed his limits, and reached godly levels of power within a short period of time. 
The assassin from Universe 6, Hit, was a tricky powerhouse that had given Super Saiyan Blue Goku trouble across the years. But during the tournament, he proved to be a worthy ally due to him assisting Goku in the battle against the speedster Dispo and the mind-exploding Kunshi. Although Dispo was clearly overwhelming him at first and it seemed like the bunny would come out on top, Hit's biggest ace in the hole was his pure progress, i.e. his ability to adapt to his opponent's movements, attack power, and block vital areas along the way. And with this clutch power, Hit was going to overwhelm Dispo to the point Topo believed it necessary for Kunshi to step in. The main reason I have Hit above Gohan is due to the fact that he was able to block multiple of heavily suppressed Jiren's attacks that a UI Goku and Super Saiyan Blue Kaioken x 20 Goku were taking, going by him saying, wow, so these are the attacks that Goku was going up against, or something along those lines. And with his time cage, he was able to damage the ace player from Universe 11 more than the first Ultra Instinct Goku did, and pushed him to the edge of the ring. Gohan did get stronger as the tournament went on, but I don't really see anything that implies he's on Hit's level just quite, even if you just want to say that Hit is like, somewhere around Super Saiyan Blue Kaioken Goku level. But I think he should be higher than that, because he was able to not be completely overwhelmed like Goku was. Dispo, the Universe 11 speedster, spiced things up a notch, as he pushed Hit and was pressing his shit, for most of the battle until the assassin started adapting to his speed, but he would have likely defeated him by using his light speed mode, in which he can further amplify his already insane speed that was so fast that even Zeno had trouble keeping up with him. He also managed to force Goku to try for the first time in the tournament and burst his transformations, from Super Saiyan God to Super Saiyan Blue, to maximize his speed while saving stamina. With base Frieza, Dispo didn't really want any beef with him until they eventually fought, and although Frieza was holding him at bay, once Dispo unleashed his fastest f**k mode, he was able to overwhelm Frieza even in Golden, to the point that he almost knocked him out of the ring and Gohan had to step in. Although Dispo didn't have as much raw power as Gohan or like Golden Frieza, his speed allowed him to overwhelm them and basically force him to set up a laser cage to restrict his movements in order to allow Gohan to solidly overwhelm him in close quarters combat. But if we're talking about a typical battle setting when Gohan doesn't have help, then I think Dispo could have beaten him and Frieza due to his speed, so that is why I would have him at least above Gohan. Before Aniraza came Koichi Raider, the three-way fusion of Universe 3, which basically was strong enough to push Gohan to use his full power, and also cancelled out Super Saiyan Blue Vegeta and Super Saiyan Blue Goku's energy attacks. But in attempts to ensure victory after Gohan basically blasted them away, Dr. Paparoni fused himself with his own creation to become Aniraza, a hulking behemoth with insane power that allowed it to keep track of and hit all of Universe 7 at the same time, despite them coming from multiple directions. And its dimensional warping capabilities, akin to Janemba's, allowed it to cripple Goku and the others. Since Koichi Raider was already Super Saiyan Blue tier, and Aniraza was powerful enough to force Super Saiyan Blue Goku, Vegeta, Android 17, Golden Frieza, and Ultimate Gohan to work together against him, that is why I think he should be likely superior to Dispo, Hit, and other heavy hitters, no pun intended, within the tournament. Due to Super Saiyan God Goku's insane power level and speed, even the combined might of the Universe 6 Saiyans proved fruitless, as they were forced to combine and multiply their power several times over by using the sacred Patara fusion technique and becoming Kefla. Thanks to her Saiyan genetics, her strength grew tremendously as time went on, and her might was so much so that she managed to match and overwhelm Super Saiyan Blue Kaioken Goku and take his heavy blows. Unfortunately, or fortunately for Goku, as her power grew even more, Goku had no other choice but to surpass his limits once more and trigger his second Ultra Instinct state. Kefla's key levels were so astronomical that she stated that she could blow away an entire universe in a single shot, and Whis mentioned that her power as a Super Saiyan had already rivaled the Spirit Bomb that replenished Goku's energy in the battle against Jiren. Plus, it was stated by Piccolo that her level as a Super Saiyan 2 had likely surpassed Ultra Instinct 1, and by extension was clearly above Aniraza. She was eventually beaten by Goku with an all-or-nothing Kamehameha slide, which was amazing. But thanks to her efforts, Goku was able to break his former peak and become even stronger for his encounters with Aniraza and Jiren. I think that Kefla should be at least equal to or above Ultra Instinct 2, given that just one of her lasers was powerful enough to heavily cripple, if not outright, kill Goku.
and was really only defeated because, well, she fell out of the ring. Okay, this next one is probably the hardest one for me to play, and that is Lapis, aka Android 17, who was far and wide one of the MVPs within the tournament thanks to his quick thinking, massively durable shields, and limitless stamina, which helped him perform at his peak pretty much throughout the whole thing. Even before the start of the tournament, his power was greatly hyped up, as he was able to match Super Saiyan Blue Goku casually, uh, by training to fight poachers, you know, that makes sense. Additionally, he was also the only one on Universe 7's team at the time who could tell what the hell was going on in the battle between Jiren and Goku's first encounter, while virtually everyone was like, what did this fool just hit Goku with? One of his best moments was when his shield managed to cross through Aniraz's Ball of Death, and his punch managed to crack apart Aniraz's reactor, and thus help the other Mighty Four repel his attack and eliminate Universe 3 altogether. Although he was strong enough to tussle with the likes of base Topo and was implied by Frieza to have been messing around during their beam clash, his energy type was ultimately insufficient in dealing with his God of Destruction form, due to the Destruction's energy's properties that nullified his intense barrage. However, I do believe that Android 17 likely got more powerful as the tournament went on, because he was not only able to tatter Jiren's clothes, but clash with a powered up pissed off one, take the hits meant for Super Saiyan Blue Kaioken Goku and Super Saiyan Blue Evolution Vegeta numerous times, and his self-destruction was potent enough to cancel out Jiren's energy attack, which very likely scales above God of Destruction Topo's own. So, because of those showings, I think it can be argued that Android 17 would scale much higher than this placement, but to stay consistent, I'll have him around this area due to his difficulty in dealing with Topo. Albeit, I think this was more so a factor of energy type and not raw power. In other words, I think a peak 17 had enough energy levels to keep up with Topo, but because it was not divine energy, its effects were greatly hindered. At worst, I think he should be at least above Kefla and Aniraza because he was taking hits from Jiren and Topo who were stronger than them to begin with. And I'd also like to mention that he's probably the MVP. I mean, don't get me wrong, everyone did their part, but 17 just went in. Coming up is the leader of Universe 11 and the Warrior of Justice, Topo, who during the Zeno exhibition matches proved to be superior to Super Saiyan Blue Goku and pushed him into using his Kaioken state. Admittedly, he didn't get much action until the endgame of the tournament, but he should be at least above Dispo, as he managed to hold his own against Android 17 and Gohan at the same time, and was able to solidly withstand Gohan's full power Kamehameha's numerous times unscathed. It wasn't until he got overwhelmed by Golden Frieza and Android 17 that his uniform got ruined, and his resolve to abandon justice and admire destruction came into play, and helped him unlock his God of Destruction form. With it, he actively destroyed large portions of the stage, warped or destroyed the world of Void, and gave Frieza an utterly insane ass beating that he deserved. He was quite evenly matched with Super Saiyan Blue Evolution Vegeta, to the point that his Akai energy nullified his massively insane final flash, which by this point should be at least several times above Super Saiyan 2 Kefla, due to the fact that Super Saiyan Blue Vegeta's final flash had already surpassed a spirit bomb that had eclipsed pre-UI-1 Super Saiyan Blue Kaioken Goku and rival Super Saiyan Kefla. However, due to the insanely higher energy levels released from Vegeta's final explosion, this did Topo in and knocked him out. But I think that he should be at least above 17, Aniraza, and Kefla for sure. The Prince of All Saiyans, Vegeta, is of course quite near the top thanks to his intense training that allowed him to fire off a massively powerful final flash as a Super Saiyan Blue that made Jiren embrace himself and allowed him to surpass the power of the Spirit Bomb. Then, with Super Saiyan Blue Evolution, he was able to fight against Jiren on comparable footing to Super Saiyan Blue Kaioken Goku, who at this point already had multiple Zenkais up his sleeve. His biggest play in the Tournament of Power was being able to defeat God of Destruction Topo with a final explosion, which heavily surpassed his final flash and survive it to fight Jiren some more. Unfortunately, due to Jiren's overwhelming power, Vegeta was forced to fall and leave his wish in the hands of Kakarot. Overall though, the Prince of Saiyans certainly did not disappoint in showcasing the limit-breaking capabilities of the Saiyans. It might seem like a surprise that the next contender is the Golden Emperor himself, Frieza, who had his own fair share of insane moments. At first, his base or quote-unquote final form barely held its own against a base god essence Goku from the revival of Frieza arc, but due to his insane mental training that he did in Hell, 
He mastered his golden form and as a result, his base form got so strong to the point that Dispo feared him and Frieza was even confident enough to take care of both Super Saiyan 2 Cauliflora and a controlled Berserker Kale. Yeah, he got his ass beat by Topo, but I mean, he withstood the abuse, got up, and the Hakai energy ball that affected the world of Void literally affected it to a higher degree than Vegeta's final flash, the Spirit Bomb, or Kefla ever did. So his durability is crazy. In base, he was clearly a Super Saiyan blue tier being as proven by his battle with Dispo, and with his golden state, he outright gained power and durability well above even the first and second Ultra Instinct states, thanks to the showing against Topo. The reason I have him above Vegeta is due to the fact that he ended up fighting a stronger exhausted Jiren that surpasses limits. And because of his insane durability that allowed him to withstand an energy attack in base that was meant for Super Saiyan Blue Evolution Vegeta and Super Saiyan Blue Kaioken times 20 Goku. Plus, base Frieza was shown as fighting comparably to a base to Super Saiyan Goku, who likely got another Zenkai after his third bout with Jiren. I believe it can be argued that Frieza got stronger as the battle went on with Universe 11, as proven with the encounter with Jiren, and one of the main reasons as to why he was unable to affect Topo wasn't necessarily because of the raw power, but because of the energy type. Like in Pokemon, they were essentially trying to use the dragon moves on a fairy type, it just wasn't going to work out. To further prove this, when Topo was charging up a regular energy attack meant to knock out Android 17, an exhausted base Frieza was able to explode it, despite said energy attacks increasing in potency after Topo had transformed. We do know that Vegeta's final explosion, likely regular key oriented, managed to overwhelm Topo's hacks properties, so that is one possible route one can take to argue that Vegeta was outright superior, since Frieza's own raw power couldn't overtake Topo's at that moment in time. Overall, the best way to describe Frieza is that he had much better stamina than the Saiyans, but had more raw power than 17, which is proven further by the narrator saying that in regards to the Hakai Shin Topo, he had power that overwhelmed Frieza and was beyond Android 17's, implying that the degree of difference between Android 17 and Topo was greater than the difference between Frieza and Topo so he should be at least above Android 17. Whether you agree or disagree, I do think that he, 17, and Vegeta should be at least within the same tier, and depending on the arguments, they can be switched around. In fact, many of you in the comments section of one of my polls seem to favor Vegeta overall, but some of you did show Frieza some love and, you know, explain that he does have some worthy accolades that could put him around, more or less, Vegeta level. Second to last is of course Jiren, who even while heavily suppressed had shaken the infinite world of Void, shocked Beerus which even merged Zamasu didn't do, and most importantly, was stated as having already transcended his god of destruction, Belmod. Due to his crazy might, Super Saiyan Blue Kaioken Goku was mauled around like he was nothing, his time cage proved to be breakable, and he also managed to one-punch the blue piece of shit called Majikayo, who had overwhelmed Dispo at one point. Even before going at full power or surpassing his limits, Jiren was able to make a joke out of the Spirit Bomb, glare away Super Saiyan Blue Evolution's final flash, which surpassed Kefla, endure a triple barrage from Android 17, Goku, and Vegeta, and eventually force Goku to go further beyond Ultra Instinct and transform into his white-haired, completed state. Generally, Jiren proved him being an absolute monster as he was able to power up even more and managed to fight quite evenly with perfected Ultra Instinct Goku until he lashed out at his friends and enraged him, ending his victory right then and there. Of course, everyone knew that Jiren would be in second place, but it is worthy to mention that Goku needed multiple Zenkai and fusion level boost to dethrone this mighty king. At long last, we have Son Goku who after conquering a menagerie of enemies, nearly dying several times, and surpassing his limits, finally elevated to being the overly strongest fighter in the whole thing. Although he and Jiren were pretty evenly matched and he likewise forced him to break his own limits, once Jiren f***ed up massively by trying to attack Goku's friends, Goku exploded with rage and solidly overwhelmed him, only to be stopped at the last moment by his body given out from the immense strain and limit breaks he had to go through in less than an hour. In the end, Son Goku truly became the strongest mortal in all of the universes, and his heights are nowhere to be found as he can just surpass his pinnacles as long as Saiyan blood courses through his veins. Once again, of course, everyone knew Goku would be high up here, so here you go.
Anyways, there you guys go. Do you agree or disagree with the list? I do think that it becomes really complicated when you talk about Frieza, Vegeta, and Seventeen because I think all of them have pretty good arguments, like proving that one's above the other. But I think that it just comes down to what you consider consistent, and if you, you know, incorporate that some of them got stronger or got more serious along the, you know, Tournament of Power's progression. But yeah, let me know what you think. I will be doing a Dragon Ball ranking video of the movie villains. Uh, it might seem really simple at first, but there's actually a lot of information that makes it more complicated. But yeah, thanks a lot for watching, and I will catch you, Thotties, next time. Peace out.